Starting off, I'm going to give an introduction on what we're going to go through today. So I'm Nate Richards. I'm a county ag agent in Kent County. And um, after attending the um, uh, Farm Stress Summit at MSU, uh, myself and a few educators with FCS as well as uh, in the ag program uh, worked with uh, uh, putting together this program, talking about a very important issue in the ag community. Um, so uh, starting off with this workshop, we're going to talk about stress and how it affects the lives of farmers. Uh, farming's a uh, unique uh, uh, profession because it, it often goes back generations and um, it's also a very isolated job sometimes. Um, farmers are by themselves sometimes days on end and they don't have people to talk to. So um, what we want to do here is help um, with ag service providers to be a conduit um, to get help. Um, we're not professionals. We're, I'm not saying I'm a mental health professional, but we can be that first aid for a farmer in getting the help that they need. So um, reviewing um, who's going to be talking today, I'm going up first. Um, Emily Zobel um, will be um, following me, uh, followed by Chuck Schuster and uh, Jeanette Jeffrey. So um, I'm going to go through some of the bullet points of what our objectives are today. Um, building awareness around potentially stressful conditions affecting some farmers. Um, going to be talking about a little bit about uh, the, the current economy, as well as um, just stressors on the farm. Um, learning stress triggers, identify signs of stress and review helpful techniques for responding. Learning techniques for identifying, uh, approaching and working with farmers who may not cope with stress effectively and learn where to go for additional help. So I'm going to go through an informal survey here. Um, going through a few questions and uh, you can just raise your hand as we go through. Um, who uh, among us here are lifelong or multi-generational farmers? Um, who here in this business, who, who is in this business because they love it? Good to see. Uh, who knows of at least one farmer who is currently under a great amount of stress because of the economic uncertainties or um, of this business or because of medical related matter. So quite a few. Um, who here believes that this farmer has adequate support from the existing social and economic safety nets? And we're going to talk more about that. I think that's a, a, a really big one, especially in rural areas. Um, who here um, is prepared to identify and deal with stress-related emergencies affecting another farmer. So hopefully we'll have more hands raised after this uh, workshop. That's what we're trying to, trying to um, tackle here. So farm stress, um, far, farming can be a very stressful job. Um, uh, in 2016, uh, the data shows that uh, 417 farmers died from a work-related injury. Uh, that's approximately five times higher than the um, average for, um, for total occupations. So um, injuries, death, um, that they're, they're things that can happen on the farm. Um, another uh, bullet point we want to talk about, um, opo opioid um, use in rural areas. Um, according to a survey, approximately three out of four farmers say it would be easy to access opioids. Um, and then lastly, and I think this is the most important, um, an inadequate medical presence in most rural areas. And um, what, we, what we see is a federal designation. Um, there is a um, health professional shortage area. Um, that's a designation by the federal government. Um, approximately 67% of um, HPSAs, health prof professional shortage areas, are in rural areas. 
Um, so not surprisingly, um, farmers in a rural area might not have all the tools or the access to the care that they need. So that's why um, we think it's really important that these ag, ag um, service providers on the front lines can help be that conduit to get those farmers to the help they need because giving them a phone number and saying, hey, call here might not always be enough. Um, often when there's a shortage, they can't get seen in time. Um, we want to be able to provide that first aid, that first level of help um, during a crisis if we can. So the agrarian imperative, um, so the agrarian imperative impels farmers to hang on to their land at all costs. Um, the agrarian imperative instills farmers to work incredibly hard to endure unusual pain and hardships and take uncommon risks. Um, and these are some quotes, the land means everything to farmers, losing the family farm is the ultimate loss. Um, so a little backstory to that, um, when we started in colonial times, 90% of the population was involved in farming. By the Industrial Revolution, that percentage was down to 50%, and now we're at 2%. Uh, so these farmers that have hung on, it's, it's a prideful identity. So um, uh, uh, coming into a situation where you might lose the farm can have an extreme impact, much different than uh, losing a job in any other profession. Uh, the census data shows uh, in the last 10 years, uh, the state of Maryland has lost 600 farms. And that trend is likely to continue. So these are a lot of farm families, a lot of farmers that might be going through an extreme uh, identity crisis, um, stress crisis, where we as ag service providers can help them. So a little bit on uh, net farm income. Um, so we had boom years in 2011 to 2013. And uh, the national average since 2013 has declined by half. So um, uh, thinking about that, uh, net farm income nationally is 50% less of what it was last year. I mean, not last year, in 2013. And that trend, um, is the, the predicted trend is for that to plateau um, at what it's about right now, um, at least for the next year or so. Um, they don't have an outlook of a, a boom coming anytime soon. So we're in an economic situation where more farmers might be in a financial crisis. Um, and looking at uh, dairy especially, dairy's been hit hard at, um, even more so, uh, they, they had their boom up to 2014, but they've um, had prices for the last five years now um, in, in a pretty stressful situation um, to make ends meet. Um, looking at Maryland, we're number 30 for net farm income. Um, so to put that into perspective, uh, California is all the way over here at uh, $17.8 billion in net farm income. Maryland is at about $0.68 billion. Um, so it gives you a perspective of, about the dollars in each state. Um, uh, Michigan is uh, number 34, just a little bit ahead of us. Um, and then looking at what Maryland's net farm income has looked over the past 10 years. Um, 2013, oh shoot, thought that was a pointer. At the very top of that spike, that's 2013, and that's where we were um, at the, the peak of our boom for uh, net farm income. Since that time, we've had a 24% decline. Um, so we're not quite as bad as the national average, but um, 
That being said, uh, a, a lot of farmers are in a situation where they're not making as much money as they used to, um, or any at all, um, and that trend doesn't look like we're gonna um, see an uh, increase in income anytime soon. So the dairy farms, this, this one's especially important. Um, on average, uh, what we see from this graph, this is the, um, the dollars per hundredweight um, in the last 10 years. Um, on average, nationally, uh, dairy farms are losing two to three dollars for every hundred pounds of milk they produce. Um, so that's, uh, that's pretty significant. Um, what we're seeing is a lot of dairy farms are, are going out of business right now. Um, and five years of low prices um, is pretty tough. So, um, and what we're seeing is that that trend is not, not looking to improve for this next year. So it's not just dairy. We've also seen um, a loss in, uh, in corn, wheat, and soybeans. Um, what you can see here is the prices, and as, as we said before, 2013 was kind of the, the peak of our boom. And um, in all these markets, we, we see that uh, um, we've had stagnant prices for the last several years. Then medium farm income. So. Uh, in this graph here, we see the, um, in the yellow, that's income from uh, uh, on-farm. And in the gray scale, that's income from off-farm income. Um, so a lot of family farms, they have a combination of on-farm and off-farm income. Um, I want to highlight dairy, because it's the only one where uh, on-farm income equates to over 50%. And a large reason for that is the um, intensive amount of labor that a dairy farm requires. So um, considering that they're in um, a situation where the markets have been poor and they're not making as much on farm, off farm income, um, it's, it's especially critical. So um, a, a big part of farming is there's a lot of things that are not in their control. Um, weather is one of them. Um, in 2017, um, approximately $300 billion of economic loss was endured due, due to just 17 weather-related events. So these can be hurricanes, they can be fires, um, they can be flooding. Um, us on the mid-Atlantic, I'd say more often we'd see drought and flooding as major reasons for economic loss. Um, but there's a number of things uh, that can cause stress that are outside of a farmer's control. Um, weather, um, markets, and government regulations, they have three things that um, have a huge impact on their business that they have no control over. So um, one thing that comes to mind when I think about farming, um, the serenity prayer, um, it says, uh, give me the strength to accept the things I cannot change and um, the courage to change the things that I can and the wisdom to tell the difference between the two. Um, farmers have a great deal of stress just on worrying about things that they can't control. So um, we need to be able to identify the things that you can change on your farm to help them through those small pieces, bite-sized pieces that they can, they can tackle to improve their situation. But we can't dwell on things like this because they're, they're outside of our control. So in summary, um, Price volatility will continue to exist, and many agriculture markets are bearish for the near future. Um, many farms are struggling to cover cash flow, and year-over-year -year earned net worth is negative for many in multiple sector sectors of the agriculture industry. 
And lastly, many farms are in financial distress, putting farm families under prolonged distress and causing mental and physical health issues. Um, so the current economy, um, finances are a major factor for stress. So um, we want to recognize that during a bearish market, um, we can provide those, um, those conduits to, to get farmers help. Um, so with that, I'm going to take any questions. And um, I didn't mention it before, but um, if you want me to go back to any slides, I can. Um, and we can go over stuff. Um, this is supposed to be interactive for the whole day. Um, we'd like to have participation from you all. Um, but uh, with that, I'll go to questions. And after that, we'll, we'll go to the next speaker.